what we saw at Pfizer, typical data warehousing project to create what I'd say a customer data hub was anywhere from six to 12 months, uh, which if you look at any business case nowadays, six to 12 months is an eternity. Uh, that's when we got introduced to the concept of data virtualization way back, uh, you know, almost 10 years ago. And I personally have been a big fan of it ever since, uh, really because of um, the ability to deliver quickly, uh, the ability to integrate that information in many different ways, whether it's a web service, ODBC, JDBC, or REST interface. Uh, but more importantly, the value it brings really to the business in terms of uh, process integration, which I'll talk about later. Really trying to bring all that data into a data warehouse didn't make a lot of sense for us because again, many different data sources, many different regional processes in which that information moves through. What is the quickest way in which you can create what I would say a customer master data model uh, that allowed you to integrate sales, marketing, plan, manufacturing information in a very consolidated way. So uh, again, uh, data virtualization, in my humble perspective, was a great architecture model to move forward with pretty quickly. For, for Pearson in particular, where our business is changing on a weekly basis, so having readily available information on demand in any kind of format is, is an imperative for us. One would ask, well, why don't you just try to standardize on one common you know, database or data technology? But in today's world, that's really hard to do. Uh, and the return on investment, usually for a business case like that, is, I would say, three to five years. So I'm sure many of you have been down the path of developing a business case and trying to get stuff out the door. Uh, what we're seeing, sometimes the best approach is really to abstract out a lot of your data sources and start creating what we call data services. And those really drive a, a couple key things. Number one, it gives you the ability to reduce complexity in your environment. Number two, it gives ways for people to start collaborating on information that they would never think or dream possible. It really develops what I would say some core architecture capabilities of the company that actually allows your architects and engineers to have control on how they define customer and product information versus Oracle, SAP, Salesforce defining it for you, which I think is very powerful. And how do I provide a 360 degree view of customer and product information to my sales rep who's out detailing a product to a teacher or a professor? Uh, how do I provide our marketing team with real-time insights into what customers are saying about our products to change their marketing plans? And then how do I provide the call center with a view into product information that allows them to know that they are really in touch with what the customer needs. Rather than trying to rip and replace all of these systems, why, didn't we create, why don't we create a capability that aligns to a new set of business processes that allows us to take our existing systems, create a customer and product model that maps back to a common business process that we actually worked on with the sales, marketing, and call center uh, folks that mapped out how we consistently uh, provide sampling, tracking, detailing, uh, and call center capabilities all using a backbone of a common process and then layer data virtualization uh, underneath of that business process to provide uh, master data and real-time information on uh, customers and products. Um, and to do that, oh by the way, in three months or less. Traditionally, you could think about doing this, well, why don't I create a, a data warehouse and start pulling all this information together? But quite honestly, that may take a lot of time. Uh, quite frankly, I think a, a better approach in our case was, let's create those uh, canonical models around product and information separately, populate those into a data virtualization tool, and then start integrating the information together. And then over time, as our, as our business changes and those, those back-end systems change, you can easily retire those systems without disrupting, disrupting any of the front-end business processes. So that was really our approach. First was enabling the sales, marketing, and call center team to collaborate and view customer information in ways that they had never done before. Two was accelerate the, the process efficiency gains that we could get in our sales, marketing, and call center uh, groups. And then third, oh by the way, a roadmap for starting to retire some of our legacy systems uh, that we no longer saw strategic. If they are using a you know, salesforce.com tool, I can give them an ODBC or JDBC or REST or web service or SOAP interface that they can consume that 
you know, provides the same set of data that I would be providing to our backend Oracle ERP team using uh, a composite uh, Oracle adapter. The key is that I'm, we're able to start integrating these teams in rapid fashion using a data virtualization technique, which I think is, is number one, much quicker time to market, and number two, much more cost effective than you would traditionally try to do some of these IT projects, and three, gives us much more agility in actually changing our customer models moving forward. Customers don't like to get two to three different answers from the same company. And so what this enables you to do is to allow your customers to get a common set of answers, the same answers, across disparate parts of your business, which I think is, is, is wonderful. In our case, customer information really sits across seven different areas. It sits across our three different ERP backends, our two different CRM systems, and our two different call center applications that we run. What composite software allows us to do is get customer detail information sits across those seven different systems I talked about. That could be the, the last five orders that a customer um, actually processed with us. The, the three or four reps that actually called on that customer the last five times that we saw him. The, the status on their order. The service calls that they've actually placed. Having all that information, the power of your marketing, your sales, and your uh, your call center reps really gives the business the power to be a very customer-centric business, which at the end of the day, uh, we view as one of the key advantages for, uh, for how we're going to move forward. If you look at our environment, we're looking really using composite software as an abstraction layer um, to really mask the complexities of where customer information sits in our environment today and creating a reusable set of business services and components that can be leveraged across many different applications over time. Number two, it protects you from any kind of vendor lock-in that you may have. I know Oracle or SAP or Red Hat may not want to hear that from me, but I think one of the powers is that it gives all of you in this room the ability to control your own destiny around information. Data virtualization is not a technology enabler, it's a business enabler. Um, and I think the more that we can talk about how it is really a transformational capability to, to enable the business to move much more quickly and efficiently, uh, in particular around linking customer and product information together in new and different ways, is a very powerful message. You can get this stuff up and running in less than a week. Um, and if you don't believe me, anybody, feel free to, to contact me or come into our environment or, or talk to Mookul who's here. But we were able to get a lot of this stuff up, up and running in less than a week and able to deliver a lot of these capabilities in three months or less. It really starts with transformational business process where information needs to be consistent across many different channels, i.e. sales, marketing, and your call center environment. <laughs>